Kathleen was 30 years old when she first came to us to discuss the removal of her existing dental implant, which was placed about three years prior to her visit. She reported that not too long after her implant placement, she began to experience some odd symptoms, including periodic headaches, uh, skin rashes, and generally not feeling well. She saw her physician and had a range of blood tests done, which were all negative and all within normal. She also reported having sensitivity to metals, including nickel. The implant was checked by her dentist several times, and aside from some bone loss at the top of the implant, it appeared fairly healthy with no evidence of active inflammation or infection. And she also had no pain or swelling near the implant. The x-ray showed evidence of presumed periimplantitis with about three to four millimeters of bone loss on the top of the implant. The three-dimensional cone beam CT scan showed a relatively well-positioned implant with no other bony defects or abnormalities. With her continued symptoms that never quite resolved, she elected to have the dental implant removed as her health-related issues could not be explained by any other factor. Of course, she understood that with what appeared to be a relatively healthy dental implant, its removal was no guarantee to help improve her symptoms. This was an important conversation as the exact relationship between her symptoms and the dental implant was uh, certainly unknown. The plan was to remove the implant in a non-invasive reverse torque technique and place some autogenous bone particulate in the socket in order to help preserve and augment the bone. So first, the crown was removed from the implant. The soft tissue surrounding the head of the implant appeared relatively healthy and free of any inflammation or infection. For the dental implant removal, a special device is first placed on the implant. Then, using a controlled reverse torque technique, the implant is engaged and then gently rotated out. This procedure takes literally less than three minutes to perform. Next, the site was cleaned and thoroughly irrigated. And the autogenous bone that was harvested from her wisdom tooth area with a very small incision was then packed into the socket and then covered with a resorbable collagen material to help protect and stabilize it. A couple of resorbable sutures were then placed to stabilize the graft materials in place. There was no post-operative swelling and very minimal discomfort for a couple of days. And the site itself healed completely in about three months. In a six-month follow-up, she reported that her symptoms have largely resolved, although she still had occasional headaches. We continue to monitor her progress and hopefully see an improvement and resolve of her symptoms over time.